What's up guys, Chaba here from Game of Conversions and I'm back with another proven sales letter breakdown video. Today, I'm going to take a look at probably one of the most famous headlines ever, which is do you make these mistakes in English? So a lot of copywriters, even beginner ones, have heard about this headline, uh, but not many have actually read the promotion itself. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go through this uh, space ad uh, together and see why it works and even if it would work today as well. So this was written by Maxwell uh, Sackheim in 1921. So it's a hundred years old. And the cool thing about this, even though it has been copied to death, so, so many people have used this, do you make this these mistakes in blank headline, uh, it's still probably pretty effective. And as we go through this, you'll, you'll see basically how uh, the wording itself, uh, the words, the sentences, the structure of it could still uh, be pretty good today. It's still understandable. It still has a strong uh, value proposition. It gives away value. Uh, it has a lot of proof. It has a compelling uh, call to action and it's still effective. So this was a lead generation ad, which meant that um, basically uh, people got a free book called How You Can Master Good English in 50 Minutes a Day. Uh, in exchange for basically subscribing to a mailing address. And then eventually they would get various offers, you know, from uh, the company or from other affiliate partners. But uh, but but even for uh, a lead generation offer, you still have to create a compelling argument to make people interested in this, okay? Uh, and this was so effective, by the way, it ran for decades that even Gary Ben Sevenga swiped it at one point because he had a promotion called Do You Make These Mistakes in Interviews? Uh, so it's that uh, super well known. But why does this headline actually work? Well, uh, it has to do with two things. First of all, it's a question. Uh, so this actually makes people wonder whether this applies to them because you say, do you make, uh, you know, people, this gets people thinking, they get, they, they start thinking like, okay, so do I make these mistakes? Uh, do I not make them? Like, what's up with that? So this is one of the things that makes it super effective. And the second one is the word these. And I think this is the most uh, important word in this entire sales letter, because it hints at a list of words that you don't know about. So it's like, do you make these mistakes? Like which mistakes? Like, do I make them? Do I not make them? Uh, that's why it's so powerful. It creates a lot of curiosity around these words. If, if uh, Maxwell uh, Sackheim had said, do you make, uh, I don't know, uh, do mistakes in English? Or do you make painful mistakes in English or something like that? If he would have used an adjective, it wouldn't have been that effective at all. But these, that's really powerful. And also, uh, the mistakes parts is also powerful because I think that the core emotions that this promotion is aimed at uh, are embarrassment and inferiority. So people, especially in those times, especially in 1921, uh, when society was a little bit different, uh, people were very afraid of being embarrassed in public. Even to this day, many of them are. They are. They were very afraid to, to have like this inferiority complex because their English isn't good enough. Because in professional situations, they would make mistakes. There were many more grammar Nazis uh, in those times, uh, probably. And, uh, and this was really a big pain point for them. So I think this hit hard, uh, but it would still work even to this day. So... Under the headline, we have a, a cool subhead as well, which says, Sherwin Cody's remarkable invention has enabled more than 100,000 people to correct their mistakes in English. Only 15 minutes a day required to improve your speech and writing. So, again, it teases a new unique mechanism because it says remarkable invention. So, invention, this presupposes that it's something new and remarkable presupposes that it's really cool has enabled more than 100,000 people. This is proof. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, this has worked for hundreds of thousands of people to correct their mistakes in English. This is like the benefit, the core benefit that you want. Only 15 minutes a day. This is really important because this 
shows that uh, the solution that we're talking about is simple, fast, okay? People want instant gratification. They want the magic pill, uh, and it's way easier to sell that than to sell uh, this painful, long, uh, endurance type of, of program. Nobody wants that. Uh, they need it, but nobody wants it. That's the problem. So that's your job as a copywriter to find the sweet spot on how you can uh, have the best of both worlds, okay? So uh, 50 minutes a day, uh, required to improve your speech and writing. So speech and writing also qualifies people because this is aimed at both people who think that they have problems with their speech and also people who think that they have problems with their writing. Okay, really powerful. So um, after the headline and, and subhead, we have uh, immediately a picture of Sherwin Cody, which probably is there to establish authority and credibility with the reader, okay? He is looking right at the camera, that builds trust, okay? It uh, it uh, establishes him, like he looks like an intellectual, okay? He looks like this very smart, intelligent, uh, and no-nonsense type of intellectual. He even has this weird bald spot, like <laughs> many intellectuals do. Um, but I, I like the picture, maybe, uh, you know, Gary Bensevenga always said that you should read uh, Proven Promotion every day and then find one place where you could improve upon it. And I think that one of the improvements here could be to have a little subtext under the picture because uh, we only have Sherwin Cody, but, uh, but people's eyes are drawn to the text under the picture and maybe some type of benefit or some other type of um, powerful, punchy copy uh, would be even more powerful. But I mean, it's still it was still pretty effective. So in the beginning, just like with good promotions, we don't start with like the product or something like that. We start with the hook. And this hook uh, is effective because it acts as a demonstration and it adds value. Because, and it makes people wonder, because instead of like, talking about all the benefits and of the product and making promises, uh, we start with something like, many persons use such expressions as leave them lay there, and Mary was invited as well as myself. Still others say between you and I, instead of between you and me, you know, and a few other examples like that. So this is there to uh, get people really invested into this whole thing because as they're reading this, they start thinking whether they make this and maybe, just maybe, uh, they, as they read some of these examples, they're gonna be like, oh snap, I also make that mistake. So if I make this mistake in English, what other these mistakes in English do I make, okay? Uh, that's why it's so powerful. It uh, acts as like an activizer for people. Plus, it's also demonstration, demonstration of this guy's knowledge in English grammar, Sherwin Cody's knowledge. Uh, and it gives people value because from now on, they'll be able to uh, distinguish between the correct form and the incorrect form of this. So I think it's powerful. And first of all, it uh, qualifies people uh, in terms of writing. And then it qualifies people in terms of speech, okay? Because this first part uh, describes problems uh, regarding writing and the second part conveys problems regarding speech. So after this little lead part and the hook, we get our first subhead, which is why most people make mistakes. So I think this is effective because it kind of hints at a secret. It's not worded as secret, but like, I'm guessing a lot of people are interested in like, okay, so why do people make mistakes? I wanna know. And this also gives value to people. And once again, Gary Bensevenga was the one who said that you should always make your advertisement valuable because uh, nobody wants to specifically uh, read an ad, but people do want to read stuff that interests them. And as you see that this whole headline, it's interesting, it gives value. Do you make these mistakes in English? Even if you don't uh, subscribe to this lead generation form, basically, you still get a lot of value. You get actionable uh, insights into what's the correct form and the incorrect form of something. You get uh, other tips and techniques and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's effective. It gets people reading and that's what you want as a copywriter. So. After saying my, why most people make mistakes, you uh, we we have a few philosophical questions, okay? Uh, and we have questions like, what is the reason so many of us are def deficient in the use of English and find our careers stunted in consequence? 
Notice how it's he's agitating the pain. Uh, why is it some cannot spell correctly and others cannot punctuate? And we have a few other questions like this. It makes sense, right? It gets you wondering. And once again, it draws people in way more so that they actually uh, have a way higher chance that they'll read the promotion itself. And then after these questions, we get introduced to, uni to the unique mechanism of the problem. So Stefan Georgi talks about the unique mechanism of the problem and the unique mechanism of the solution. So when it comes to the unique mechanism of the problem, uh, we get the, um, uh, the answer to this as in, you know, what's the secret here? Why people can't speak English properly? Well, because they, uh, they never formed the habit of doing so. So we get introduced to uh, what's unique about the thing that they're experiencing, like why it happens. Okay, uh, and this is really important because once again, it establishes this as the only type of guide that people uh, want to read because there might be several other uh, how to speak better English types of guides out there guides out there but this one has a unique mechanism it describes like you know up until this point you thought that you you have to learn all these rules but it turns out it's not about grammar rules it's about forming good habits okay and this must have been like a really like mind blown type of uh, idea for people at that time. Even to this day, you can still so sell something like this just by angling it as if, as, as like not a X problem, but a habit problem actually. So I think that's why it, it works. And then the second subhead we have, what Cody did at Gary. I'm not really sure about this one. I don't really get it to be honest, uh, but uh, hey, it is what it is. So we get uh, a little testimonial section to the left, which is important because it adds proof. And by the way, this has a lot of proof. So uh, Maxwell definitely was a good um, user of proof, which is very important to get conversions. So um, after basically uh, mentioning the unique mechanism of the problem, we get introduced to the unique mechanism of the solution, which says that once again, uh, those who uh, speak correctly, they don't use rules, uh, they rules, they use uh, habits, correct habits, okay? But the problem is that, you know, uh, you aren't really taught this in school, but just think about your mother tongue, like how, you know, nobody actually teaches you grammar, but you still learn to speak correctly because like you, uh, you, you, be, you start internalizing it and it becomes a habit. And I think this is a great example and it contextualizes the whole idea much better because it just makes sense. People after reading this, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. Now, obviously, uh, like the copywriter wrote, uh, like left out the fact that children's brains learn uh, language way differently compared to adults' brains. So I think that this research came out later, so he probably didn't really know, but like that's also the main reason why it's so hard to uh, learn a language, especially with good pronunciation after the age of like 10 or something like that, okay? So um, I just wanted to mention it. But back in those times, this was super legit. Um, and then, we have a unique selling proposition introduced as well. So we're basically uh, getting through the, uh, the the key elements of persuasion, of like making a promise, highlighting benefits, highlighting the unique um, mechanism of the problem, then highlighting the unique mechanism of the solution, and then introducing how this is different. Because people might have seen several versions of this, but how Sherwin Cody's uh, system is different. It says, in that point lies the real difference between Sherwin Cody and the schools. Here's an illustration. And then we get a proof part. We, we get a little story of how, you know, this guy is so good. Uh, he went to a school and in just uh, like five weeks, he achieved way better results in pupils, in students than they did, you know, learning for two, three years with regular teachers. So he's that good. And this just... Um, builds up proof inside like for him and this also teases the unique mechanism even more because at this point if you're the reader you're starting to get interested like oh wow it's like how is that possible how would that work how can somebody learn to speak better in two weeks than you know others in school 
learn for three years. How is that possible? And once again, that's what you want as a copywriter to uh, create uh, curiosity for these unique things. Then we have even more proof, you know, and, and some benefits uh, by saying that, you know, in fact, this whole system wasn't just effective, it was actually fun. Children enjoyed it. And I think this is a like an objection handling part and as well as like a benefit and a proof, everything in one, because like, you know, children were wild after the about the study. It was like playing a game. So this assumes, this communicates that, that this sp special system that he's developed is fun. It's not hard. Remember, people don't want hard. People don't want to work hard for something for long periods of time. They want easy, they want magic pill, they want instant results. That's what they want, even though that isn't the thing that always works. But you still have to like hook them with this, and then obviously you give them like a more comprehensive uh, method or system in your lead generation or in your course or something like that. So we get more value. Um, we also get mentions of like, hey, this is simple, unique, and sensible. Once again, it's just it just highlights how easy it is, how it works for anybody, how it's like you don't have to work much for this. It just it just works for you. We've done the work for you. So then for the next subhead, we have reason why copy, which is always important because you, you don't just want to like rile people emotionally and appeal to their emotions. You also want to like make a logical argument. You know, good copywriters are like lawyers in a sense because they construct a logical argument. They construct a case and they prove their case. So uh, I think this part does that really well because it just uh, talks about things that make sense for the reader and they, uh, they underline the persuasive message here even more. Then we have a unique mechanism and benefits, even more teeth. So we have a lot of references to the uniqueness of his situation, of his system. And we also have a lot of proof elements. So I, I really like this and I really commend this uh, promotion for these two things, especially considering the fact that this was written a hundred years ago. And these things, like, it just shows how timeless good copywriting, I copywriting is because even in modern day courses, in a lot of courses, you don't even get stuff so good as this one. Even after a hundred years, even after people had so much time to experiment, to figure out what really motivates people, how they make decisions, how they buy, uh, you know, these are the guys who invented basically the whole act of copywriting. These are the guys like Maxwell Sackheim, who uh, among like Claude Hopkins, uh, Eugene Schwartz, uh, Victor Schwab, you know, these people, they invented the game. And that's why it's important to study directly from them, directly from the source. So after we continue, uh, we have another subhead, which says only 15 minutes a day. So once again, this highlights the ease of use for this. We also have some objection handlings uh, sprinkled around. Uh, by This one says basically that this works for anyone. It says, you do not need to study anything you already know. There are no rules to, me to memorize. So you don't, you don't have to study anything new and there's no rules to memorize. So once again, a lot of people are like, okay, well, this sounds easy. I, I should give it a try, right? And there's in, even instant gratification. It's like only 50 minutes a day. Wow, I mean, think about the upside. I can't do it. But we have other objection handling elements like, nor is there very much to learn because people don't inherently like to learn, okay? They don't necessarily want to learn. They want the end results. And by highlighting how you don't necessarily have to learn so much, uh, it makes it even more powerful. And then we have... Uh, another idea, which is like the 80-20 principle. It's like, hey, this is actually a shortcut. So once again, this makes sense for the reader. It's like you, um, I just give you like a, a list of 69 words with the repetitions. And if you uh, learn these properly, you're going to be able to hack your way through the entire English grammar dictionary and word dictionary uh, because like these are the most common words. So this adds value to people. It builds intrigue and it also acts as proof for Sherwin Cody once again because he seems like this almost like this researcher guy who spent painstaking hours in the lab discovering like which words are the most important in English and how he can optimize the heck out of his system so that you as the end user get the best experience 
possible, okay? This builds up a lot of authority for him. And then we have even more proof. Like we have some mini stories like the 69 uh, words, uh, you know, like there are no more than one dozen fundamental principles of punctuation. Once again, it's a cheat sheet. It's a shortcut. You can learn this and then you're going to be golden. That's what we want to communicate here. Uh, and then finally, we have a, well, not finally, but then in the next part, we have more qualification and objection handling for people. Because imagine like, I, I guess there are a lot of objections to this. Some people think like, oh, but I'm not a native speaker. Oh, but I'm not a writer. Oh, but I don't know. I always hated English at school. Yeah, but you know, I don't want to spend, I don't have time to spend hours on this every day. Or like, yeah, I mean, I don't want to just uh, hassle with this because who cares anyway, okay? So you, in order to convert these people, you systematically have to deconstruct their objections. And that's exactly what uh, Maxwell did in this piece, okay? We have a lot of qualification elements, objection handling elements, proof elements to do just that. Then we have at the end, which is there to build desire for people, the, the, the like, let's say the last one third of a copywriting promotion. So we have benefits, but we also have higher level benefits, not just money or something. We also get things like, like, check this out. Those who take advantage of this method gain something so priceless that it cannot be measured in terms of money. They gain a mark of breathing that cannot be erased as long as they live. They gain a facility in speech that marks them as educated people in whatever society they find themselves. They gain the self-confidence and self-respect which this ability inspires. Okay, so they get to feel better about themselves. They get to feel... Uh, like uh, more qualified than other people, which is really powerful and, and, and really good to um, uh, like underline because so many times people only talk about money or about other success, but like if you can talk about more higher level benefits, uh, it can really elevate the quality of your promotion. And then the final subhead just teases free offer. This is the offer part of the promotion. Uh, we got a little reason why as to like why this whole thing exists. It's like, hey, I mean, I just want to like, I, I, there's only so much tips I can give you in the short advertisement. So uh, here's why, you know, I put a bunch of other tips for you in a little booklet. You can grab it right now for free. Go do it now. So we get introduced to the lead magnet, uh, which still works the same way 100 years later, by the way. We also have some proof in that, you know, this has been uh, published by Sherwin Cody School of English. You know, it sounds really official. It's like this guy is really like a big fish. And um, then we get a call to action. We just, he just says, if you're interested in learning more in detail of what Sherwin Cody can do for you, uh, send for this book, How You Can Master Good English in 15 Minutes a Day. And then we have Ordering instructions, very important because a lot of people don't specify this and, you know, end users, readers don't really know exactly what to do. You really have to uh, guide them through this because otherwise they start having more objections. And in any case, you know, the default for people is to do nothing. So Maxwell says, merely mail the coupon, a letter or poster card for now. No agent will call. This is important. It's a cool objection handling part because at this point, some people might feel like, yeah, but you know, if it's free, like where's the catch? I don't want to get pitched anything, okay? Uh, but you know, we answer the objection preemptively. And then you have the little uh, cutout coupon, which in which has a first person uh, call to action, of course, uh, which says, yes, please send me without obligation on my part, your free report, no agent will call. So the most important things just repeated here. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It's still really powerful even after 100 years and it's a great example of why good copywriting is good copywriting. The psychology, the fundamental psychology of people doesn't change even after decades or hundreds of years uh, or centuries as it sounds better if I say centuries, right? Uh, and uh, that's why it's so important to learn copywriting because if you do, you'll be able to influence people until the 
your, the rest of your life. So that's why it's one of the best money skills and life skills that you can ever learn. And hopefully, if you watch this video and you're still here, you learned a lot about this. And if you enjoyed it, then please make sure to like the video uh, because that helps out a ton with YouTube's algorithm. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm releasing these videos daily nowadays. And if you subscribe and also click the little notification icon below the video, then you'll be the first to know when I release a new one. And of course, I'm going to leave a link below this video in the description section with a link to the entire full playlist, okay, of these proven videos. I'm on day 50, uh, 52nd at this point. So there are 51 other cool videos that you can watch right now. I think this is already unparalleled on YouTube. Nobody has this type of content library for free, not even paid maybe, uh, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build the best content library of proven sales letter breakdowns on YouTube that you can watch for free and get a world-class uh, world copywriting education. But in order to get there, you know, I need your help in you putting social signals on the video. So that's why it's important to like it, share it with others, comment under it, uh, you know, just uh, subscribe to the channel uh, because that helps out a ton. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it and see you in the next one.